herd immunity and COVID-19. This has been a frequently discussed topic during the last few weeks, and I will talk about herd immunity with vaccination natural infection, the basic reproduction number, and herd immunity threshold and its association with viral variants. So what is herd immunity? It is a situation in which a certain proportion of a population is immune to an infectious disease, a certain proportion, through prior illness or vaccination, and which makes a spread from person to person unlikely. And I will explain this. So if you look at this figure, if no one is immunized, you find that the person who is infected in red can spread the disease to many members of the population. If some are immunized, the disease can spread to other members of the population. But if a number of people are immunized, then you find that the spread of the condition is restricted or limited. As you would see in this figure, if only some have antibodies, then you find that the virus can spread easily. But if most have antibodies against the virus, the virus is contained. And this will also show a similar picture. You first start with some people being infected and others being non-immune in blue, and therefore the virus can spread. Then if you vaccinate them, you find that a certain group of people become immune. And the immune people will act as a block to prevent the infection spreading. So if you look at this figure, you have the infected person in red, a red dot. And then you have the transmission in the red arrows. And it is transmitting from the infected to the non immune person and then it goes along the chain. But if we look, when there is herd immunity and a certain amount of people are immune, you find that the chain of transmission is broken. So if you find from the red arrow, it goes to blue, it can't, the disease can't go to blue and then it stops there. So this is what is meant by herd immunity. We do not have to have the whole population immune for the disease transmission to be stopped. So if we look at this figure, sustained transmission is there if the transmitting case passes it on to the susceptible and the susceptible to another transmitting case and then to susceptible. But when there is herd immunity, the immune person comes in the middle. The transmitting case cannot transmit the disease to the immune person and therefore the susceptible person is indirectly protectable, protected down the line. So what is the basic reproduction number? Again, a very, very widely discussed concept. It is the average number of people who can be infected by one contagious person. So if the R naught is two, every infected person can infect two other persons. And the R not is given for the different conditions. The common flu is about 1.3. For COVID, it's about 2 to 5. And measles, the R not is very high. It is very contagious condition. It is about 15 to 18, as shown in the figure. These are the different R zeros we will consider. The R zero is 1. R not is 1. And after 10 cycles, 10 people will be infected. But if the R0 is three, you can see after 10 cycles, close to 88,000 people are infected. And this is the importance of bringing the R0 less than one and what governments around the world are trying to do using different measures. So what is herd immunity threshold? I told you what herd immunity is, basic reproduction number, herd immunity threshold. It's a minimum proportion of the population that needs to be immunized or immune in order to obtain herd immunity. So the proportion is one minus one over R naught. So the R naught is three. That is one minus one third. It's, it's two third and 67%. If R naught 
is 16, the immunity threshold becomes 94. So you can see from this, if the R0 is low, a lower number of people have to be immune to get the herd immunity threshold reached. This is shown in this figure. Ebola, seasonal influenza, has an R0 of approximately 2. So 50% of the population being immune would reach the herd immunity threshold. While when it comes to measles, you can see it is a big and R0 is very much higher and a higher number of the population needs to be immune to halt the transmission. Similarly, again, you can see this R0 increasing from mumps down to measles. You can see that the immunity threshold increasing from that 75 right down to 94 as you go down the R0 increasing. So this is why in the US, certain states had vaccination, but they were not able to prevent measles epidemics or cases occurring. Because only those that reach a good amount of immunity, around 90%, were able to prevent these cases coming up when it came to measles. So we know that SARS-CoV-2 infection, COVID, has an R0 of 2 to 3. So you can see here, when the R0 is about 2.5, the herd immunity comes at about 60%. And this is what has been discussed so often. And people ask what the 60% is. It's because it's the herd immunity threshold that comes out with the R0 of 2 to 3 or 2.5. So I've spoke, next I will talk about herd immunity through natural infection. That is an important thing. We spoke about vaccination. So people said, can we get herd immunity through natural infection, let lots of people get infected. But with a condition like COVID, where there are deaths occurring, this is not going to be sustainable. People are going to get admitted hospital. That's why in March 2020, the UK government abandoned this and did not proceed with this process and went down to using measures such as restricting people's movements, et cetera, to reduce or flatten the curve, as we all know very well, over that, over that period of time. If you look at the US, you can see with a population of 328 million, 60% to reach herd immunity threshold, you would have to have 197 million people immune and with a fatality rate as given, uh, given in the figure, you would have had about 2.95 million deaths occurring if you went to have natural infection giving herd immunity. And that is why we could not go down that road. There were a lot of deaths in the US, but it was not anywhere near the amount that could have occurred if there was natural infection giving rise to herd immunity. So the question that came up was, okay, what about if we restrict movement, etc., people won't become immune, they won't be they won't become immune. And therefore, when you take out the lockdown, the cases increase very rapidly because people are not immune. And this was the uh, scenario put forward by Sweden, etc. But the important thing is vaccination came in, as shown in the, the light to blue line did not talk about because vaccination came in and turned the curve because with vaccination, you find the number of cases reducing. So vaccination going hand in hand with social distancing was able to reduce the number of cases, reduce hospitalization, reduce deaths, reduce ICU care, etc. So finally, I'll talk about herd immunity threshold and viral variants. And we know that with SARS-CoV-2, the original strain R0 is about two to three. So two out of every three per persons would need to be immune to reach herd immunity. While with new variants, when they are about 50 to 70% more infectious, more transmissible, the R0 increases. That is why countries are rushing in to vaccinate people to prevent these new variants from becoming established. And then you find that three or four or four or five people need to be immune. And this is clearly shown in this figure where if the R0 increases from 66%, to 80% with variants, you find that the time period that is needed to reach herd immunity increases. 
And this is an example from the US where people were vaccinated at 2 million vaccinations per day, it would be at one rate, but if it is only 1 million per day, it would be at a different rate. So the importance of controlling the variants and preventing viral transmission occurring rapidly to reduce the R naught. So in this quick video, I have mentioned about herd immunity through vaccination, natural infection, basic reproduction number, R naught. What does it mean? I've spoken about herd immunity threshold and the effect of wider variants on the herd immunity threshold and on herd immunity as a whole. Thank you very much.